NASA's radar warning system detects an object on a collision course with the International Space Station. If the ISS takes a big hit, the whole thing is just going to be torn apart. Mission Control orders an emergency evacuation. This is a case where you just drop everything. The object is moving at speeds in excess of 28,000 miles per hour. They thought it was debris, but debris doesn't move that fast. July 16th, 2015. At 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, NASA Mission Control receives a warning that an unidentified object is approaching the ISS. There's a potential object that, that they can track that looks like it's going to poke a hole in our spaceship. If it hits you with a high speed, it could hit you with the force of an artillery shell. The mystery object is about to enter the space station's danger zone, an area astronauts call the pizza box. The pizza box is a 30 by 30 by one mile region around the ISS that is a keep out zone. Anything entering the pizza box is a potentially deadly threat. If an object is going to enter that danger zone, then the crew and the ground team take action to minimize any risk to the crew and the station. Mission Control orders the ISS crew to prepare for evasive maneuvers. One of the things you can do is move the space station. The ground control team can send commands to the space station and essentially drive it to help us avoid that object. But the object is traveling too fast for the space station to get out of the way. This object is going to reach the space station at 8.01 a.m. That's less than an hour and a half away. That's not enough time to move the space station out of the object's path. NASA clocks the object at an astonishing 28,000 miles per hour. If it hits the space station, the effects will be catastrophic. If it contacts you at the right angle, it can do a lot of damage. If the ISS takes a big hit, the whole thing is just going to be torn apart. The nightmare scenario is a direct hit on the cooling system. The way the cooling system on the ISS works, it's got these big radiators filled with ammonia that radiate heat out into space. If a radiator is struck by a big enough particle, the tubes that carry the ammonia coolant would be ruptured and the ammonia would leak out. If it were to leak inside the space station, it'd be catastrophic. That It's a, a poisonous substance. Humans can't breathe it. NASA can't risk the lives of the crew. Mission Control orders them to initiate Flight Rule B-4-101. They must prepare to abandon ship. Go to your Soyuz, get out of there. Just drop everything, let your tools go, and you float quickly to your escape vehicle. The crew members scramble into the Russian-built Soyuz capsule, which acts as a lifeboat and emergency shelter. It's three people sitting side by side. You're standing by for a call from the ground to say, stay or go. When you're thinking about something coming close to the space station, you just don't really believe it's going to happen. The crew braces for impact. All they can do is wait as the seconds count down to 8.01. has ripped past the space station, missing it only by a mile and a half. The crew of the International Space Station lives to fight another day, but a mystery remains. How did a potentially lethal object slip through the early warning systems protecting the station? The ISS is protected by the most sophisticated radar sensing system in the world. It's very rare for something like this to slip by. From a crew point of view, what's frightening is the fact that um, it's not possible to track every single particle that might be a threat to the International Space Station. So there could be something up there that you can't do anything about. NASA describes the object as a piece of space debris, but it was moving far faster than any ordinary space junk. Typical speed in low Earth orbit is about 17,000 miles per hour. This piece of space junk is unique in that it's moving twice as fast. NASA scientists speculate how the mystery object could build up that speed. One possibility is the object might have previously collided with something else and gained speed from the ricochet. 
In theory, it is possible for an object's speed and trajectory to change after a collision, but the object that hit it would have to be going extremely fast itself. So what could make this killer object be moving that quickly? News of the close encounter attracts the interest of the UFO community. They draw attention to two spots of bright light, which appeared on the ISS live feed just 24 hours before the near miss. The day before this emergency evacuation procedure, two objects seem to be keeping pace with the station. They look like they're tracking it for some reason. It's curious because generally space debris doesn't follow the ISS in formation. They change direction with respect to each other and the space station, and they start moving very quickly. It looks like they're controlled. NASA does not comment on speculation surrounding the events leading to the unplanned emergency maneuver of the ISS. It's interesting that we're getting these kind of uh, debris avoidance maneuvers more frequently. What is going on in orbital space? Are there simply too many things up there, or are there too many things up there that we don't know about? The Apollo missions bring back the most valuable rocks in human history. But the priceless artifacts go missing under strange circumstances. Houston, we have a problem. We don't know where our moon rocks are. Tracking down NASA's lost legacy becomes one man's quest. I'm not going to rest until we track those moon rocks down. The Apollo mission spurred unprecedented advances in technology. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The giants of American industry made millions supplying NASA and some tried in other ways to make money off the back of the moon program. July 24, 1969. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins returned to Earth after making history. They carried with them 50 pounds of moon rock the first of more than 2,000 precious lunar samples from the Apollo program. President Nixon decided after the first moon landing and the last moon landing that he would gift moon rocks to 135 nations around the world as well as the 50 states and the U.S. properties.